go. Tensions now boiling over between the United States and Israel as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu claims that his nation has more information that the U.S. was behind that U.N. resolution. Let's bring in Alex Conant, a former communications director for Senator Marco Rubio and now a political consultant at Firehouse Strategies. Welcome. And Leslie Marshall, a syndicated radio talk show host and also Fox News contributor. Leslie, let me start with you, please. If they have that information, if Israel does, why wait until Donald Trump takes office? Why not put it out there now? You must be reading my mind. That's exactly what I was thinking uh, when uh, the prime minister was talking. I don't think they have it. And I think if they did have it, they would put it out now. Uh, first of all, President Obama leaving with an, a president-elect coming in, uh, threatening to undo everything that is part of the Obama legacy, uh, would definitely not help him. There's, uh, there's just no reason to do this uh, for, the, for the president, especially with Donald Trump uh, coming in as president uh, next year. Secondly, um, I believe... If you look at WikiLeaks or anybody else who's made threats on Tuesday, we're going to make this big announcement, or we have evidence. If you have the evidence, show it. And it actually, I think, would have more power and hold more weight if it were released now. So I don't believe they have it, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah, Alex, what do you think about that? Well, it's a good question. I guess we'll, the only time will tell whether or not they actually have more information they're going to be releasing. As you said, some of it has already been reported on, some back channels between the Obama administration and other foreign governments at the UN. But I think the more important thing is, what is how does this impact U.S.-Israeli relations moving forward? U the U.S. has no better friend in the Middle East than Israel. It's the only other democratic government in the, in the region. There's a long tradition of the U.S. showing no daylight between the U.S. and Israel. Except President Obama has certainly upended and, and, all of that right exactly. now. Exactly, and, and Obama is shredding that tradition. And John Kerry's speech today, which I think is just a last you know, a flailing attempt to muster some sort of legacy after eight years of failed foreign policy will only do more harm. I think it does give Donald Trump a tremendous opportunity when he takes office on January 20th to not just mend that relationship quickly, but then move forward in a dramatic way on securing on strengthening Israel's security and really bringing more peace and stability to the region, a region Leslie, that has really suffered over the last eight years. Uh, John Kerry referred to Hamas as a militant group and Netanyahu as a, quote, extremist, yet we, the United States, try to paint ourselves as a neutral party in this. That's hardly neutral language. Well, first of all, Hamas is a terrorist group. We know that. Yes, and until they but he called them a militant charter, which, group, yes. and there's a big difference of that. Even the State Department considers yes, but Hamas also, to be a terror the, group. Co co correct, and uh, you know we can get we can get hung up on the, the semantics. I think he was wrong not to say they're a terrorist group, mm. but I do, in a sense, understand why. When you have a portion of Palestinians that did vote uh, for uh, Hamas uh, to be their leaders in a certain section um, of their territory where they're currently residing, I think that he was being politically correct. I don't think that he was uh, in in any way uh, not you know referring to Hamas specifically as a terrorist group. Like you said, the State Department, which he is head of, does. Uh, consider them. They are on a terrorist Alex, watch list. Alex, is he being politically been correct or from just this talking about Palestinian talking points? Well, I think the entire speech was a huge embarrassment, not just to John Kerry himself and our State Department, but to the United States government to have our top diplomat give a speech like that today, where he uses terms like the ones you just described, mm -hmm. which are not consistent with what U.S. policy, they're certainly not consistent with what the U.S. Senate, which has a big role in setting foreign policy, believes. Uh, and, it's, and it's just, it, it ignores the reality of the moment. And so I think it's an embarrassment. I, I, he shouldn't have given the speech, but I do think it will be quickly forgotten well, and, once and, Trump takes and office. Some Democrats prominent Democrats even called upon him today uh, to not give that speech and of course he went ahead and, and did it anyway. Leslie, Israel says it's concerned that there may be another UN resolution before the president leaves office. Do you think that that will happen? I'm not sure because I don't think this came from the United States. And I think we have to look at, when we look at realities, we have to look at realities and numbers. Not only is Israel a very strong ally in the region, but the majority of our strongest allies outside of that region also voted in favor of this. And the world wants there to be peace in the Middle East, specifically in Israel. And there will be no peace without a two-state solution. And I do agree with Se Se uh, Secretary of State Kerry when he says that continuing to build these settlements it is not going to bring the Palestinians to the t table. It doesn't help. Uh, but further delays any peace process, and we're going to look at the same mess in the next four, eight, 40, or 80 years if we don't come to that realization well, and quickly. Well, when President-elect Trump comes in, he certainly has a, a big mess to clean up right now, that is for sure. Uh, Leslie, uh, Marshall, thank you so much, and Alex Conant, thank you for coming in as well. Thanks.